there, this is Professor Sheehan, and this is my first video in a series called the Quarantine Series, in which I make videos at home for my Sound for Visual Media class, um, and show you what I would normally do in class if we weren't shut down uh, due to this nasty virus that's going around. Um, this is going to be a very healthy video where you see me making a very healthy shake, which is important to keep your immune system good. Um, so since I don't have the rights to put Hollywood movies on YouTube and such, I, I am resorting to filming things I can film in my home for this series. So this video is going to be about doing a spotting session. Spotting session is where you as the head sound person, perhaps with a director, will look through all the video and um, make note of all the different sounds that need to be there. And if you have a team, you can give them the cue sheets and they know exactly if they're the sound effects team, they know exactly what effects they need to put in. You know, if they're the music team, they need know exactly where to start and stop music. Um, let's take a quick look at the cue sheet here. So this one is obviously typed, um, but often you are just can handwrite these as you're doing the spotting session. Um, the way I was working today, it made a bit more sense to type it up. So it just shows uh, one column, it shows the time. Um, this is showing absolute time, meaning where on the Pro Tools timeline something's gonna be. In some situations you might be entering SMPTE time code or something else. Um, we're noting what's happening in the video. Um, any dialogue. Uh, and here's the hard sound effects. Uh, this particular clip's not gonna have a lot of ambience, um, possibly some room tone from the production recording. And we'll put some music in, but I haven't decided the music yet, so the music column is blank. But you see the hard sound effects um, column is pretty detailed with every little sound that we're gonna put in there. Um, so the assumption is that we didn't, you know, pick up awesome sound from the production, from, from recording the video. And, uh, this will tell us where each hard effect corresponds on the timeline. All right, so let's go back to Pro Tools. So to do a spotting session, you need to watch the video. So you're going to need to show your video screen. Um, so you got your window menu at the top and you can choose video or you could do command 9 if you have a keypad and voila there it is I'm gonna hit the return key to return to zero on the timeline and there's our very first frame um, I do have my time showing in absolute time or minutes and seconds I could show uh, frames but I just prefer to do minutes and seconds and milliseconds um, I also have my nudge over to the right of where the time displays is set to feet and frames. Um, not minutes and seconds actually, but you'll see why it's set to feet and frames and then I have one frame selected. Essentially what that does is it allows me to, let me just forward a little bit in this video so we get past this intro spot here. Okay, there, there's some very handsome actor in a really, really fresh uh, outfit there. Awesome, awesome hat. Um, you know, you got to give props to the prop department there. Okay, so if I had a numeric keypad with a full, you know, on a full keyboard, I could just hit the plus and minus keys and it would advance or go back one frame. Um, since right now I'm on a laptop, I have to hit the control key and then the less than sign will go back a frame and the greater than sign will go forward a frame. So that's very useful in locating um, where I need things to be. Now I wanna show you that when I hit play and I stop, it's stopping right at that exact frame um, because I have at the top of my screen on the left, I've turned on this button called insertion follows playback. If that is off, watch what happens next time I hit stop. Okay, here we go. And I hit stop and it went back to where we started. Um, that's going to drive you mad if that setting is like that. Um, so we're going to turn that on. There's also, um, you always want to have on this button here 
It's called Link Timeline and Edit Selection. I call it the Don't Screw Up My Session button. Um, you almost never want this off. One time someone showed me why you would turn it off, and it made sense, and that was about 10 years ago, and then I haven't had any reason to turn it off since then. Um, so basically you want this one uh, to always be on or weird things happen and the playhead or the cursor you know plays back from places that have nothing to do with where you think the cursor is um, okay so let's uh, it looks like there's about to be some action here it looks like um, our actor here who may or may not look like me uh, with some extra facial hair growth than you might be accustomed to uh, is about to make a smoothie and is about to pour, I believe those are chia seeds, into a blender cup. Uh, so let's let's assume we have no sounds and we have to add all the sound in. We have nothing from production sound. Um, even if we did, it probably wouldn't sound that good um, since we're generally pointing mics at the actors for dialogue when we do production sound. Um, I got a little note from my Facebook friend here. Let's close that <laughs> just to add a little fun to the to the video we're making here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just basically play it and oh, right there. Okay, now see, I'm too late because the seeds are already hitting the bottom of the cup. So I'm gonna um, again, if I had a full size keyboard with a numeric keypad, I could hit the minus and plus on the keypad. Uh, in this case, it would be minus to go back. Since I don't have that, I'm doing control and then the less than sign. And I'm going to try to see where do the seeds... Okay, now I need to go forward. I went back too far. Where do the seeds really hit the bottom of the cup? And it's right around there. So I would write um, 9.747 on my cue sheet. Let's see if that's the actual time I had written. Uh, 9.507. Okay, so... Um, actually I was probably when I made the cue sheet, I was looking for when the seeds start to come out, but I should be looking at when they hit the bottom of the cup. So I would actually make that change on my cue sheet if I was doing a spotting session. I'll do that right now. Point seven four seven. Okay. That should be better. Um... All right, let's see what the next awesome sound is here. Actually, let's let's go ahead a bit. Let's see where did I say it was going to be the uh, using the blender one o five nine six nine. You can always go up here and type that in one o five point five six nine, and you see I'm starting to blend things here. So let's go a little bit before that. I'll just move my cursor ahead a little bit and see where I start the blending got some music in my head obviously okay so again I'm too late of course I don't know exactly I can't anticipate exactly when to stop it to be perfectly on the right frame so let's hit uh, control and the less than sign and go back a little bit you can see stuff's being blended no um, starting I'm going forward now, so hitting c control and the greater than sign. Uh, once I turn, once I turn this, it turns the thing on. So I'd have that sound come in right there. And if I'm just spotting it, then I'm just putting that on my cue sheet. So that is uh, spotting, and that's what goes into a cue sheet. Um, and it's, you know, it is very tedious to make a cue sheet, but it makes the work you do afterwards much less tedious. Um, you don't have to, you can just start flying in the hard sound effects. So we're going to do that in one of the upcoming videos. Um, and yeah, that's spotting and making a cue sheet. Now, if you have a crew working for you, if you have like a sound effects team and a dialogue team and a music team, for example, maybe we, this, this is a pretty bootleg production. We don't have all that, but, uh, then you could give copies of the cue sheets like to the sound effects team and they would um, make or find on a library their hard effects 
and they'd be able to fly them in really quickly because they have exactly all the locations where everything needs to go. And there's no question about are you putting this sound in or leaving it out. Uh, the music team can see where a song will start or end, etc. So it's a lot of work up front, but it um, helps overall in the long run. All right, we'll be back soon with some more videos about um, syncing up part effects. Um, what else are we going to do? We're going to do um, you know, how to use reverb, how to use compression, things like that to make things sound a bit better. So I will be back.